Yes. No barking. Just lay on your little sheet. Shush. <laughs> Hi, everybody. This is Tara Woodruff with the host, Arsenio DeBose. And uh, excuse my appearance, but I've had a rough day. Go ahead, Arsenio. Why don't you tell everybody what we're up to today? Why is important prioritize your dream? Very cool. I was hoping to have more people from Team Phoenix here to discuss how they they kind of, you know, cross that bridge with this because it's a it's a really huge thing. What is what does it mean to you, Arsenio? To finally do anything I actually wanted to do. Okay. One second. We got some people on the Hangout page. Make sure I have that. I have to turn on the volume. All right then. Um, well, I wanted to talk about a little bit about what this means to me. Um, prioritizing, you know, time for your dreams to to make them something that's, you know, all the time we are we. We have all sorts of different things telling us what we need to do. You know, bills come in, we need to pay them. The rent comes due, we need to pay it. We're scheduled for a certain time to be at work, we need to be there. And it seems that through the hustle and bustle of every day, you know, either blue collar or even white collar life, shit's on everybody else's terms. And when when we determine that we want to prioritize our dreams, there. It's it's difficult to do sometimes. Sometimes it can be something that's difficult. I remember when I had a job, I had a difficult time prioritizing time after work or before work or whatever to make sure that I was making sure that my dreams are part of the, my priorities, making sure that I was there to make it all happen. I ended up leaving my job before I had any real preparation for it. I knew in my head I couldn't go back to work. I knew all this stuff, but if I had, during the time that I had that job, if I had prioritized my dream instead of being so upset about it all the time, you know, you remember Arsenio, I used to be upset. Yeah, like I am like right now. Like you are right now, yes. I mean, it's, it's, when we know that we want out of there, when we know that we want to be sure that we are going to do what we want to do for our family, for ourselves, for our friends, that we make it number one priority. And, you know, tell us what's going on with you, Arsenio. What's going on? Basically, my job is a pain in the ass right now. Mm -hmm. I'm prioritizing their dream, basically, while I'm not prioritizing mine. I got gotcha. you. Like, it sucks for sure fact that it's like every time I try to put a step forward and I go into that place it's like I'm taking two steps back. It's actually like I'm walking backwards more than I am forwards. Right. It just sucks right now. Well what do you think you could do differently to prepare yourself for the day when you're not gonna be able to walk in that door anymore? First, get myself into a financial state where I'm actually okay to actually say, you know what? I can't, I can't curse because it's YouTube, but you get what I'm saying. Okay, well, that's we understand that, but what about what you could do now to get yourself into that state that you want to be in? Basically, promote my ILN more. There's 24 hours in a day. There's no reason why I can't. Right on. There is, um, you know, Vincent had a story about somebody I, I wish I could remember, and it's been long enough that I don't think I could find the post, but uh, where somebody was working like a 70-hour work week job and managed to turn shit on. Like, it, it was a testament to prioritizing our dreams, that's for sure. I, I definitely... Um, when I wake up in the morning, I don't turn my computer right on at first. I don't even allow myself to go to work until about noon because I know that once I'm on, I'm going to be on at least 12 hours working my business. You know what I mean? So 
one of the ways that I found recently, because I, I've, I've almost felt like I was kind of running in circles for a minute there, like I was doing too much but not really producing, not really getting anywhere with it. Um, I started to get up every 45 minutes, walk away from the computer, take a break from it. Um, also, making sure that, like I said, not going straight on the computer, not going straight to any Facebook, not even my dog's Facebook. Going outside and taking my coffee and my butts with me and, and reading a book, you know, based on how to, how to live my fullest life, you know, constantly being a student of what it is my dreams are made of. Um, I take a look at my granddaughter, which you can see in the picture because I'm using Sarah's account because I got to hate it. They flagged me. Um, <laughs> Stella, you know, just take a picture, take a look at Stella and Sarah. I mean, and my mom's here too. What I want to do for, for my family and for my life, it requires more out of me than just doing a lot of busy work for 12 hours straight. So now I'm getting off there. Now I have, I write down a schedule for myself every day. The night before I go, before the day starts, like before I go to bed, I write down exactly what I'm going to do first thing in the morning and as I go throughout the day. And once those income producing activities are finished, then I can, I can do the, more of the social networking and, and more of the uh, relationship building. But I don't know, would you be interested in hearing what it is, how I start my day? Please, because I start my day completely different. I know. <laughs> it's okay, though. It doesn't have to be exactly like this or even close, but it's got to be something that you, you've designed for yourself. There's an old saying um, that me and Kobe Marie from the Law of Attraction, we were, we were in a group together and we're good friends on Facebook. Manifest responsibly. If you set intention and you have a focus on your dreams, then whatever happens is, is uh, working towards it. When we, We're always manifesting all the time whether we're doing it on purpose or not. But anyway, what, what I do is first thing is I wake up, grab my book, brew the coffee, grab my smokes, go outside, and read at least three pages to a chapter. I underline, I make a mess of the book, It's that's the thing, I do that. Then I come inside and I go to podcast, I go to Jeffrey Combs, I find a call that I'd never heard before on his podcast, and I listen while I start devising while I start brainstorming in my head, while I'm taking notes and brainstorming what's my blog and my video going to be about for the day. And when I get done with Jeffrey Combs, I make my video. I do my blog. I put the video inside the blog. A lot of times my blogs are short on words and lot on video. Ain't nothing wrong with that. I'm getting it done. I syndicate it. I get it on every social media website there is. And I email it along with an email to my list. I make sure they always know what's going on. Um, I also, I'll do any artwork, I'll create a new landing page or if I want to update my blog, like the uh, last week I, or was it this week, it could have been this week, I changed my branding all around on Sunday, as a matter of fact, I took a day off of Facebook and I changed my branding on all my social media websites. So I took away some stuff that I'd been using for a long time, the Helpful Entrepreneur I've been using for six years. And I think that the words are wrong, and I decided to change them. And so I decided to be a mind reset coach because that's when we shock our brain is when really things start to happen for us, you know. And then um, after I'm done with that, after I'm done with those things, I go into my island university, and I find a training that I want to do, and I watch that and take notes. And then I social network. Then I'm doing my social network. I'm answering messages, accepting friend requests, and um, doing hangouts. I'm doing a lot of hangouts. That's a really big deal, I think. You know, just th that's that's the crux of my day. So when my first the, the first run at production takes about two hours. And really, all in all, that's all anybody needs. You can do all of it in two hours. All of it. So like like Arsenio, you, you go to work every day, or at least most days. You're always at work. If you could find the two hours, whether they're before or after, before you put anything else on your plate, you focus on your dreams for two hours. And that, that would include like your personal development, which would be either your island university, 
and or a Jeffrey Combs podcast or watch a video on YouTube. Um, there's a there's a ton of people that have a lot to say. Les Brown, Abraham Hicks, Tony Robbins. Um, oh my gosh, the hip hop preacher. I can't remember his name though for some reason. You do that. You you take notes. And then you write down a few words about it, you shoot a quick two minute video about it, and you put it on your blog, you syndicate it, and then you relationship market. You do that two hours a day, man, I'm telling you right now, you'll be out of that job faster than they know what happened. Take notes, people, because what she says is true. It's the truth. I'm, I'm sure there are better and even faster ways. I'm actually learning about that right now because I really want to crunch my time I want to compress my time to a four-hour work week. I really just want to be running around having fun the rest of the time. And so um, once I'm done with the book, The Charge, by Brendan Bouchard, I'm going to get, I'm going to get into the four-hour work week. I only have it on PDF, and I really hate reading it that way, but saying that just makes an excuse not to get it done. I'm in front of the computer anyway. I might as well read it there. Like she said, people, excuse. <laughs> your job is a fucking excuse. People ask me every day, why do you go to this? Why, why do you work here? Why do you come here every single day knowing that what goes on? And my response is, because I have to. No, no. The truth is, is because I want to. Because it's a fucking excuse to just say, okay, whatever. That's all it is, people. So every time you get up and you go to your job, is a fucking excuse. You're right. You're right. You remember, Arsenio, when I was making all those videos about cookies and I was all pissed off at Publix? Pretty you know, the, the hardest thing about that time for me was is that I was looking myself right in the face, knowing damn well that every day that I went to work, I was going against my own um, ethics, my own free will. I was, I was cheating on myself every time I walked into that job. Remember what I told you, Miss Tara, before I got this job? I do not want to work for anyone else. What ended up happening, I have to work for someone else. Yeah. Yeah, I remember that very clearly. And I mean, like, it, it, it was just the thought of someone controlling me every single fucking day. Of, like, for six hours during a day, that person controlled you. you know I mean? So it's like, no. No. I want to be free. I want to feel free. I want to be able to eat, sleep, shit, and drink whatever the hell I want. Like, for instance, today I'm at work, and it's dead. I cleaned everything. Everything was taken care of, and I'm making my breakfast. And the boss comes in the back. Oh, why is this here? Why is this there? What are you, what are you trying to do? You trying to eat breakfast, man? No, you can't eat breakfast. You got to do this. Dude, how the hell are you going to tell me I can't eat breakfast? If I just came in here early in the bright and early in the morning just for you to make sure that your business is prospering, and you're telling me you can't let me cook my own breakfast? I'm a grown-ass man, dude. Yeah. Like, that's the type of shit certain people deal with besides me. I'm sure you're damn sure I'm not the only one on the planet who's dealing with this shit. Oh, and if there are there people watching... Listen to these words. Get into ILM. Right now. But it's got to be more than just getting in, guys. That's definitely one thing. I don't know, Arsenio, if you saw my, my video that I that I posted yesterday. Did you see it? No, not yet. I plan to right after this. Well, what, what I'm finding is, you know what? Everybody's got to understand that the person that sponsors you into ILN is not the corner store. It's not where you went and bought a $37 lottery ticket and expected to just work fucking miracles for you. You're probably already spending more than $37 a month on lottery anyway. So most people do. It's, it's really important. Just getting into Ireland is going to get you nowhere. You've got to do the work. You've got to become a marketer. You've got to become a gladiator of your own dreams. This way you can help other people fulfill theirs. You've got to get into the Speedwell system training, the Viral 5 training. You've got to set up your blog. You've got to write a blog. You've got to do all that personal branding because it's not all about ILN. There are lots of, there are lots of, lots of, lots of companies out there people are making money with. 
Ours just happens to be the very best. But you can come into the very best and get nowhere. I was talking in the video about um, a particular a particular kid. You know, he he's been suffering, going through all sorts of shit. He's got a young child, and he's about I don't know, 26 years old. He signs up for ILN. The first hour, he's crushing it. He's watching all the videos as fast as he possibly can. He's messaging people left and right all over Facebook. He even makes a post. And he was on the seven-day trial. After the seven-day trial went by, he went ahead and kept his, you know, kept his ILN apprenticeship. Never saw him do a thing again. He never once even opened up his back office to cancel. The next month comes by when his his thirty-seven dollar membership fee comes up. He gets pissed off because he had a bill due that that bounced because ILN took the money. Well, yeah, ILN took the money. This is your business. You know, this guy has no self-respect. He has no self-respect. He freaked right out, started screaming and yelling, calling people names, acting on dis disrespectful. He doesn't give a shit about his kid. He doesn't care about where his life is going. Because if he did, when he got off of work at McDonald's, he would have gone home and sat down and done what he was supposed to do to get where he needs to go. Because if he did that for 30 days straight and he still didn't make any money, ILM would have had $100 for him. We give a $100 30-day guarantee. If you do not make a profit in 30 days, ILM will give you $100. That doesn't mean that you sign up and you wait and see what happens and you do nothing about it. It means you come in, you do the job. They can tell if you're opening the videos. They can tell if you're writing in your blog. They know if you're posting on Facebook. They know if you're, if you're doing what you're doing. If, if you can't show that you're actually doing the job, if you're doing the work every single day, then they're not going to give you anything. And all you're going to have is a bounced bill, a bill that could have been totally taken care of tenfold. we got people in this company 20 years old making six figures. we got people 23 years old making six figures. we got my mom. She's 70 years old. She's in here doing everything she can every single day to make this happen. You know what I mean? There's people. If people, there are a tremendous amount of successes going on in this company right now. There's no excuse. You know, do we wait until we can't walk through the door anymore? You know, do we wait until it's impossible to show until the day that we blow up at work and say "fuck you, I quit," or do we make sure that we're working? Towards our dreams now, so if that ever happens, you're not shit out of luck. Because one of the worst things, look what happened with me. I wasn't willing to, I was too busy bitching about it. I wasn't willing to do the work. I quit the job because I couldn't physically, mentally, or emotionally walk in the door anymore. I couldn't do it. I had zero success in the business I was in at the time. You know what I'm saying? You know, within a matter of months, we didn't have electricity or water. We were hustling our ass down to the freaking library for 70 hours a week. You know, depending on my mom to pick us up and give us a ride, having to be ready when she was ready, whether you were ready or not. Not knowing what, what, when anything was going to change. But I kept going. I could have been smarter. I could have done it smarter. We could have avoided that. But at the time, I wasn't, I wasn't, I was too upset. Don't let your... Your job or your situation keep you so upset you can't keep your dreams on the front burner because if your dreams are on the front burner, you're gonna you're gonna motivate yourself. It's going to happen. It's it's not about if I had the time. It has nothing to do with that because, like you said, that's six hours out of twenty four. You know, whoever's on here, open up your calculator. I'm gonna open mine up right now. So let's let's be honest. It's six hours at work, but it's about an hour travel time to and from. So it's eight hours. So twenty-four take away eight hours equals sixteen. You need five to sleep. Sixteen take away five. That leaves you with eleven. Say you work dedicated work for two hours. That leaves you nine hours to play video games. That plays leaves you nine hours to go for a walk. It leaves you nine hours to watch Scandal back to back on Netflix. It leaves you nine hours to do whatever you fucking please with. So when we look at our jobs and we feel like we're being held back and we feel like it's enslaving us, we need to look at how much we enslave ourselves after the job is done. You see what I'm saying, Arsenio? Does that make sense? I hope that reaches somebody out there because really, I mean, let me re-crush those numbers. 24 hours 
Take away 8 for travel and work equals 16. Let's take away 5. Let's give yourself a good night's sleep. Let's take away 6. That leaves 10. Take away 2. 8 hours of free time to do whatever you want with. That's more than your job's taken away from you. And that means a lot. When you are taking more away from yourself than your job is, then who's fooling who? Who are you really a slave to? You. That's right. You are the slave of you. You are the boss of you. You control you. How about you, Mom? Sandra, are you going to open up your mic and tell us what you do to try to make sure that your dreams are on the front burner? I know you've gotten a lot more, um, you've, you've focused your productivity a lot more. Uh, I didn't make out what you said. Um, what I'm trying to do is um, make more videos that might help and, and put it in blogs. Um, I um, want to do a uh, My Perfect Day video, which will probably change daily what I think my perfect day should be and still relax but yet do business and do the things I want to do. Right on. Can I give you one tip right there? Pardon me? Can I give you one tip? What's that? Yes. It's um, something I just learned from Jeffrey Combs and Brandon Burchard. It's changing those words from I am trying and I want to to I am. Okay, I am going to do a video about my perfect day, which will change every day, you know, because it depends on business, and I have to get all my business in, phone calls, and mm -hmm. keep in touch with people that I enroll, and yet enjoy my breakfast by the pool, and go swimming, and meditate, and do yoga, and maybe walk down to the beach, because I want to live near the ocean. Yep. Um, and I will have an assistant to help help me. I need them to do. And that's what I will do. That's right. Okay. Well, that's awesome. I definitely noticed that, that you're making more videos. Definitely. You've also gotten rid of a security blanket on your video. I'm very proud of that. <laughs> and I know that you're you're doing your blogs and. The, the more we can do to keep moving forward is it's really all we can and never never beat yourself up for yesterday you know never beat yourself up for yesterday so like today is what Thursday guys yes Wednesday if you got nothing done if you felt like you were hitting your head against the wall if you're running around in circles and it just was like there are days like that and you didn't get anything done don't don't even think about what didn't happen don't ever think about what didn't happen. You focus on right now. Getting truly self-aware, getting really self-aware is so powerful. It, it is the key to this. The belief and the self-awareness, it's the key to the success online I'm tell, in anything. Because you could have a job you love. I mean, that could happen. Yeah, okay. Okay, before you continue, Tara, um, if you have a job that you actually like, that actually pays you good money and that you actually enjoy, by all means, by all means, make your money. But if you hate your job, continue listening. Yep. You're right. And even if you love your job, you really should have a home-based business, even if it's just for tax purposes. And just in case you could love your job all day, I remember the last job I loved. The last job I loved got shut down on me. If you're not the boss... You're not the boss. And I was the boss, but I didn't own the place. You know what I mean? So even if you love it, you should have you should have a home-based business to make sure that you can have a proper tax bracket because you have a choice about how you file your taxes. They don't want you to know that. And that's why they leave that education out of school. That's why when you graduate from high school, you don't even have to file a regular W-2. They leave that out because they don't want you to know that you have a choice, that you could pay your bills first and then the tax man. But when you work at a regular job, the taxes come out before you pay your bills. 
when you are a 1099 and you have your own LLC and you are a business in a, of yourself and you have a home-based business, you will get tax credits. You will be paying your bills before you pay your taxes. And then after they take the taxes out of what's left after you've paid their bills. It's a big difference, guys. It's a huge difference. So even if you love your job, you need to get into some sort of internet business. You need to get yourself as an LLC. You need to file your taxes differently, and you need to work on that business about a half hour a day. About a half hour a day, even if it's on your lunch break. So this way, it's actually you're actually moving towards profits. This way, if your boss decides to pull the plug on what you love to do so much, you already have something going. Your feet are already in the water. All you got to do is swim out and catch the wave. It's much better to be prepared no matter what. You know, and even if you do love your job, I'm sure there's something that you would love to do that you can't do because of your job. Maybe you want to be more of a philanthropist. Maybe, you know what I'm saying? Like, one of my dreams is to be able to sponsor a family or two for Christmas. I want the kids to believe in Santa Claus again. I want the parents to believe in Santa Claus again. You know what I'm saying? There's nothing like it. There's nothing like it. When somebody cares enough about you, even if you don't know who they are, to make sure there's a hot holiday meal and presents for the children to open up. It's amazing. I've been on both ends of that stick, and I would like to be on the other, the, the end I belong on for as many people as I can. I can't do that if I'm working at Publix. <laughs> can't do a lot of things if we work at Publix. <laughs> That's the truth. No vacation, no pee break, no lunch break, no breakfast, no nothing. No, no self-respecting person would do it. I mean, I got to tell you guys, since I would have fallen apart physically at this job, and um, it's unfortunate that I didn't just hold on to it and let myself fall apart there because then they'd be paying. But, you know, what, what kind of thought is that? You know what I mean? Like, the damage that, the physical damage, it's stupid. It's stupid. You know, I can't even use my hand. So it's it's definitely important that no matter how much that job's got you down, that you pull yourself out of it. You know, it's really important that you focus your mind on where it's going to stop thinking about the worst case scenario and think about the best case scenario. Don't let the pressure get to you because it'll make you sick. It'll make you sick physically, mentally, emotionally. It'll just you know, I remember a couple of weeks ago I said, you, know, you got mad about something and it was about money. You were, terror you were just nervous. It, it was, you were upset. I remember you spent most of the day sitting outside thinking about it. You remember that? Yep. It's, it's better to, um, to do something about it than think about it. Because the more we focus, the more we, we resist something, the more we, the more it persists. You know, the more we worry about money, the, I tell you what, sometimes I get I get worried and I have to force myself to sit down and write out the best case scenario of what I'm worried about instead of thinking about the worst case scenario because the worst case scenario is some crazy shit they make joke TV shows about. I don't want none of that. None of it. It can be can be hard. What else do you want to talk about out there, Mr. Arsenio? Um... Honestly, there is nothing left to talk about. I feel a hell of a lot better. That's good. See, it feels good when you're moving in the direction, doesn't it? No, it just feels better to tell the world exactly how the hell I feel and let them know. <laughs> you're right on. That's right on. So you're going to you're gonna sit down and um, try to design yourself those two hours for yourself every day? Yeah, pretty much. Because now, awesome. like I said, they're hiring more people, which means they're slowly but steadily trying to get rid of my ass. Slowly yes. but steadily. They can pay the, the center guys much more, I know, because I used to be somebody that hired the center guys. And what that means, guys, it's a work release program in our, in our area. It's very hard to get a free man to show up to work. And so what yeah. they do is there's a work release, and basically every restaurant or small business will hire work release people because they're not required by law to pay them any more than the very bottom dollar and they have to go to work or they go back and lose their time which is absolutely terrible so 
what they're doing at his job is they're starting to slowly outsource him. Every week there's a new center guy, and his weeks, you know, his hours get shut and shut and shut. It was already bad enough when he was all the way, when they were having him 47 hours a week. The money still was bad, but now it's getting kind of stupid. And so Arsenio's, it's better, you know, this is something I want you to learn from Jeffrey Combs, Arsenio, and everybody out there. Rock bottom is underrated. It's way underrated. You don't need to go all the way to the rock bottom to get yourself motivated enough to go to the top. So before time is up, Arsenio, I implore you to start thinking about that. You know what I'm saying? I think about it every day. I remember that when I remember when I was on the line when he was talking about that. Mm-hmm. That he was at rock bottom, that he was a drunk, and he used to do all this shit before he actually changed his life around. Yep. Absolutely. Yeah, Jeffrey Combs is pretty fantastic. I absolutely adore the guy. So, yeah. yeah. FYI, people. Sorry, this missed here, but FYI, people. YouTube that man. <laughs> YouTube that right man. On. Goldenmastermind.com, that's his website, and that's where you can link to his podcast as well. He's not a big video guy, but he, he records his Tuesday night More Heart Than Talent call every week. So if you can't get on his calls, which are 1030 Eastern Standard Time, um, you can listen to his podcast, which are always available by noon the next day. And, uh, yeah, Jeffrey Combs is worth my – me and Arsenio's mentor, Mark Hoverson, he's the one that runs a mentorship in our apprentice – our millionaire apprentice training. His mentor is Jeffrey Combs. So Jeffrey Combs is going straight to the top. Royalty of um, personal development coaches, for sure. And but uh, th if that's it for now, I'm going to go ahead and close this up. Is that cool with you, Arsenio? Yeah, that's fine. Go Team Phoenix. Whoever brought you to this recording or to this particular hangout, get in touch with them. Let them know that you're ready to get started. This is Team Phoenix. This is Arsenio DeBose, Sandra Copeland, and Tara Woodruff coming to you from Holiday, Florida. You guys have a good night. Good night.